Blessings on blessings. Blessings, blessings, blessings. It's, it, it's blessings. Friday. We're excited about this Friday. It's lunchtime. Uplift again. We're coming on just a second earlier, a few, a minute earlier than actual radio time. Hey, do us a favor. Share us right now. Start sharing us. Facebook. Share us with your family that uh, actually don't have social media. Tell them that we are on uh, 103.3 FM, 105.5 uh, FM. We're live on radio today. Right now, right now. Right Coming now. To you. Yes, we are here. I want you to uh, invite them out. We are right now setting up our phones so that we can uh, uh, have have the word. I got a, I got a special message on today. I want you to come in. I want you to uh, share share with your your friends and families and and everybody, everybody. Tell them to come in. We screenshot and things because we want to uh, be proper. So share us, share us, share us. We got it just a second before we are actually be live. Josh is in place. So that means that we are about to jump this thing off. One more time. Go ahead and start your watch parties. Um, start sharing us. Start your watch parties. And just get prepared for this exciting, inform informative word that the Lord is going to give on today. Um, again, we are with Rejoice, uh, AM 1380. Um, FM 105.5 and FM 103.3. This is a venture that takes um, cash, takes <laughs> capital. So we would really like for you to join with us and partner mm -hmm. and to um, share the expense and know that your work is going to be taken to the masses. Yes. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Now, our cash app is, you can you can uh, uh, sow into this <clears throat> through our cash app. It's N-O-B-C. N-O-B-C. Here we go. 103.3 K277DP Rejoice Little Rock's Gospel Experience It's time now for Midday Matter here on Rejoice with the broadcast of Network of Believers Lunchtime Uplift with Pastor Eugene Whitmore and Lady Teresa Whitmore The Network of Believers Church is located at 1111 West 7th Street here in the city of Little Rock Here's Lady T and Pastor G Blessings upon blessings upon blessings upon blessings to each and everyone that is under the sound of my voice. You are blessed by the best. And as somebody says, there's no reason to be stressed. Amen. Uh, when you're wearing what you're wearing at the level that you are uh, blessed to be in. We are thankful today for another, another Amen. Friday, another opportunity to share of God's greatness, His goodness. His grace, His you mercy, are. all of that. Amen. I am thankful. This young lady that I have next to me is, what's your name? I'm Lady T. Yes, she's <laughs> You hit me with the mic there. <laughs> Come on. I'm Lady T, and I'm so glad to be a part of the number. So glad to be here. I want to remind you guys to go ahead and share us. Um, if you're on Facebook, and if you're not on the radio, make sure your family knows that they can find us. If they're not on Facebook, they can find us at Rejoice AM 1380, um, FM 105.5 and 103.3. We would really love for you to be a part of what God is doing right now. Amen. Yes, Amen. Pastor Amen. Joel. Yes, yes, I'm Pastor Joel. I'm thanking God for a brand new day. Uh, it is... Feeling good, it's looking good outside, and I just want to encourage you people to get up today that God has given you the measure of faith, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that measure is only measured in victory. Yes. So I'm praying that you have the courage to take the next step to whatever you are defeating in this season, and don't be afraid of it because you have the courage. Yes, and you have the victory. You have the victory. We give God glory, so he gives us victory. That's a fair exchange. No, it's not fair. It's not a fair exchange. God is so good to so us. He, he loves us. Even when we were not, he was. Amen. He is. He's going to be. Amen. And I thank God for Amen. him being there. I am thankful today. I have something to say today that I feel like is going to bless. If you have not shared us in Facebook land, you need to start doing so now. Uh I'm, I'm telling you, I, I am excited about today's message, and I need I need you to get your folk in the house. It's Amen. going to be electric today. It's going to be Amen. on fire, and I'm not bragging. I just know what God does. I Amen. just know what God does, yes. and 
I'm excited about every time I have an opportunity to speak, I make sure that I ask the Lord, what is it that you need me to say now? I want to be a vessel that's being used to speak to the heart of the matter now. Amen. Not, not just randomly speaking into something, but I want to I want to know what God is saying now because people need a word now. Yes. Mm -hmm. One word from the Lord can change your entire situation. And and and, and on last night as I was uh, um, studying scripture, the Lord told me this. He says, the time is right. Mm -hmm. The time is right. The time is right. This is a, this is the time. The timing is right for us to expect God to do the great, the incredible. This is the right time for those of you that are sensitive right now yes. in the spirit. This is the right time. Now, as I as I begin to read and the Lord dropped this in my spirit, uh, I got up early this morning, early, early this morning for a uh, a, a prayer conference with a group of. Uh, apostles across the country and um, the Lord after that the Lord began to share some things with me and I want to share this because I think it's very important the time is right and the Lord specifically this happened just before we came here the Lord specifically uh, said this to me be very careful very careful for those of you that are listening to me be very careful be very careful in this season that Today is January 31st. Mm -hmm. This is the last day, the uh, last month, I mean the last day of January. What is happening right now, we are sinking back into our old habits. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we made the re resolution in December. Uh, we, we started with a bang, but now we, ha we are starting to sink or sag back into our old habits. Yeah, and, 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 and that's a problem because yes. the enemy knew that God had just opened up a portal. He had the the, the, the timing was right for a visitation. Mm -hmm. Yes. God was set on visitation. Yes. And we prepped ourselves for visitation. But now we are finding ourselves sinking back into our old modes of operations. Now this is where the Lord is really, 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 really pushing me because we are saying the same things that we said. We're back to operating the same way that we operated in. We're back to doing the very things that we've done. Now, the Lord says this, this visitation, you had it in your, your you felt your spirit rumble. You mm -hmm. knew that this was something different. This year, 2020 was a different level, a different dispensation. There were several that knew, but now we've gotten back into the old mode of our operation. The Lord says this, that this was to change your application. Mm -hmm. He gave us a visitation that should have changed our application. And if you are doing the same thing, you're going to get the same results. Mm -hmm. You're going to get the same results. Now, we know that in, in, in this new level of visitation, in this new place that God takes us to, there was a season of acclimation that needed to happen. And it was difficult for some people to get uh, 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 used to this because uh, uh, God had changed so drastically and he wanted us to stick to it so that he can train us how to live on that level. Yes. But us being who we are and the names that we have been given the titles, uh, we couldn't wait until God did his change. We had to get back into the operations because we thought we would not survive. Mm -hmm. I'm prophesying to somebody. And so the Lord says that this visitation was to change your habitation, but you were not consistent. This is, uh, we have sagged back into our old modes of operation. And now there's a there's a there's a there's a saying that it's it is insane for me to think I'ma see something different Amen. if I have sagged back into the sameness. Same. Amen. And it's because again, because our titles pushed us, our our, our our administrations pushed us into going back to what we were because we got into survival mode thirty one days into January. Mm -hmm. 30, can you share me please? 31 days. And so this visitation was to change our application. If we're doing the same thing, we're going to get the same results. Now, here's where he really pushed me to say this, and I've got to say this. I've got to say this. No matter how aggressive my voice is, mm -hmm. no matter how aggressive the things that I say are, yeah, yeah. If, if I have not had a visitation that brings revelation, it doesn't matter how aggressive my voice, it doesn't uh, matter how aggressive I say a thing and how powerful the cliche has been. 
If I don't have a revelation, then I cannot have the habitation. Yeah. If I have not learned there, I cannot. <clears throat> I need you to hear me, because we are sinking back into the old modes of operation where we are hearing the prophetic. Hear me now. We're hearing the prophetic voice, and we think just because the prophecy was so powerful, that means that I was going to be able to live what the prophecy said. Mm -hmm. If there is no revelation, there is no habitation. Please hear me. The prophetic voice, the prophetic voice announces the potential. The prophetic voice announces the potential. Your reaction to the voice will determine the action. Yes. The prophetic voice is only saying what could happen if you apply, apply it to the situation. Yes. I need to say that real loud and clear because we are sinking back into this place where we just want to hear some sensationalism. And when we go for the sensation, we won't go for the revelation. And the enemy keeps pushing the same agenda. When I, when, I, when I said this, the Lord immediately took me to a passage of scripture. He says, well, well you know... I tend to, I study all the time. And so what God does, he just pull up a scripture inside. Uh, uh, he'll say, think about this. And so he brought immediately in, into my spirit, 2 Kings chapter 4. It is talking about a widow woman that had uh, uh, fall, fallen into debt. And she, she meets Elisha. Mm -hmm. And she says, I have a problem because I have I have debts. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting story right mm -hmm. there within itself. And he, she says to him, you know what my servant done for you. Yes. Well, the devil said what whose servant was. She said, she, she, she's pleading with the prophet because your servant had done something for you. But she says to the prophet this. She says, they are ready to take my children because of my debt. And so Elijah, who is the, the, the picture of the prophetic voice, began to prophesy. Now, we know that from his actions and his record, he's got the power in his voice. Mm -hmm. And But here's what he says, I thought was so striking, and the Lord just illuminated it to me. Here's what he said. He says, now, you're going to have to do something. I can say something, but if you don't do something, what I say is not going to matter. Yeah, yeah. I know I'm the prophet. Yeah. But I, so he says to her, house. And she says, I have nothing. He says, yes, you do. You have something there. And so the instruction was to go borrow Go and get, go and get vessels. Prepare for this. If you don't prepare, you won't see. And the level of your purpose. Now he says this. He says, he says to her, he says, now make sure you prepare on the level. Prepare on the level of your need. Mm -hmm. Prepare on the level of your need. Yes. And he says, when you get this, don't get few, get many. Yes. And the text says she did. She said, now, now watch this. He says, use your sons to make this happen. I think that's interesting because not only should this blessing be the blessing for you, it should be in a generational order. Mm. Get your, make sure your children participate in it. And so she does exactly what the prophet says. She could have said and said, you the prophet, oh, you can open up the heavens. Mm. But he instructed her. Now listen to what he says to her. He says, once you get this, then she, the text says she goes back to the prophet and says, look at what happened. Mm. Now he says this. He says this. He says, take it some and live off of it. And take the rest and sell mm -hmm. and pay your debt. Yeah, he didn't say my word is going to relieve your debt. Amen. Amen. He says this prophetic, this prophetic announces the potential. Yeah. Your reaction to it will determine what is actual. If you hear the prophetic and you don't activate. You won't see the results of what you heard. Yeah. Now, this is important because we are hearing the voice of prophetic. People scream and holler and tell you that you're going to have several houses and several cars. Yeah. And you think they're going to come to your house. Yes. And the enemy is pushing this constantly. We are 31 days into January and we see it happen again. Let me say it and let me shout it very loud and very clear. Loud and clear. No revelation. Yeah. No habitation. Yes. The revelation of God comes to open up our eyes to see what God wants us to implement. And if we are not there, I'm sorry, my brothers and my sisters, I love you. I believe in the prophetic because I prophesied myself. Yes. But there is an instruction. There's an instruction. There's an instruction. It's not about the scream. It's about the instruction. It's not the way I use my voice. It's yes. the instruction yes. in yes. the voice. 31 yes. days into just and we have sunk back into our modes of operation. Okay. This visitation was to change our application. Yes.
The visitation that God allowed us to walk in was to change our application. But because of our titles and who we thought we were and who they thought we were, we are back into doing everything that we've done prior to now. And we've been expecting God and he opened up the door. We knew that the windows of heaven was open. We knew that this was a different dispensation. Yes. And now we've sunk right back into the same mode of operation where there's the absence of revelation knowledge. Yes. Listen to me. I need to prophesy this. I need to prophesy this. Where there's the absence of revelation knowledge, please hear me, where there's an absence of revelation knowledge, conspiracy theories are propagated. Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to hear me very closely. Where there's an absence of revelation knowledge, conspiracy theories are propagated. Now, when you hear ministers and preachers start propagating conspiracy theories, that's a sign that revelation knowledge is absent no matter what the title is. Yeah, Where yeah. there's an absence of revelation, when we don't understand in the spirit realm, yeah. we start talking about conspiracy theories. When you start hearing people talk about conspiracy theories, it's because there's an absence of revelation. Let me say this and be very clear. Revelation knowledge and sense knowledge are two different things. Yes. Because when you tell people that the propagation of conspiracy theories is based on revelation knowledge. They think that you are talking about their education. Hmm. I'm not infringing upon your education. You are well educated, but there's no revelation knowledge. There's two different things. There's revelation knowledge and sense knowledge. The day that Adam went from revelation knowledge Come on. to mm -hmm. sense knowledge, Come on. the day that he goes from discerning to learning, yeah. he puts himself in a position that changes the whole trajectory yeah. of yeah. his life. Jesus. And that's what we're seeing. Now, the Bible says it like this, and it says it important. He says revelation knowledge, the void when we avoided revelation action, then then conspiracy theories happen. That's why we have so many conspiracy theories because of the revelation people are so smart. You but if it's not revelation knowledge that comes from the throne of God, you won't understand what God is doing. Amen. And now you're gonna feel Amen. offended when someone tells you what God is doing. You're gonna count it. Or you're gonna count up your uh, how many years you stayed in school. And now they're trying to tell me. Yeah, they think what, that's what, what, me. what, 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 they, So, so now that's when the the, the problem comes. I, I, I'm getting to the timing thing. Come Let's on, minute, but I got to obey God here. Second Timothy, uh, verse three, chapter three, verse seven. Second Timothy. Uh, uh, chapter 3 verse 7 says we are ever learning yes but never yeah. coming into the knowledge of the truth now did you hear that ever learn that means that you can get much, as much cis knowledge and learn and yeah. get as educated but never come to the knowledge of the truth because the wisdom of men will always laugh or scoff at the wisdom of God. Yes, That's why it says yes. he takes the foolish things yes. and confound the wise. He's saying there's a difference between revelation knowledge and sense knowledge. We got more sense knowledge than we do revelation knowledge. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> we got more sense knowledge. We're going for the sense knowledge. So we ever learn, but never, it is pushed that we learn more. But you can learn and never come into the knowledge of the truth. Amen. Amen. That's why we're seeing people that are supposed to be anointed as far off. Now, there's always a crowd for people that are familiar with people that are familiar. So you can never judge who you are and your response based on people that are not ready to go to the next level. Okay. Right. And we have to be very careful that we don't judge the crowd because they have itching ears. Yes. Itching ears. Itching ears. Itching ears means that you, I heard something familiar that I lack and I respond to that. Because when God starts pushing new agendas, when he starts pushing new dispensation, every season has a sun. And there's a revelation in the mouth of that sun of the season. And so by default, by default, by default, it is offensive mm -hmm. to the mindset that is. I'm preaching to yes. you. Yes. It is, it is offensive. That's why Jesus says, all oh, will be offended in me. Will be offended in me. Because I'm infringing upon something that has been in your life for centuries. Yes. For centuries, yes. This idea has been there for centuries. I am the new idea, and so it's going to be a Peter says, not me. He says, I'm not asking you, Peter. Tell I'm me. telling you yeah. that all will be offended in me, especially when I'm shifting and pushing and push, tugging and turning and, and making things uh, be visible that has never been visible before. Amen. It's going to confuse. It's going to confuse. God says, I will acclimate those that have a heart to change. Yes. And so we got to be very careful in this season that we don't miss a visitation that's supposed to change our application. Mm -hmm. There's somebody that's listening to me right now. God is ready to change your application, but you're too popular in the place that you are. Come on now. Help. It's going to be difficult for you to make this change. But God says, if you embrace it, he'll grace it. Yes. If you will embrace it, he 
will of grace. And so now the Bible says this, we ever learn, but never come into the knowledge of the truth. Now this is interesting because the eighth verse is where the power comes. It, just, it says, just like Janus and Jambres, as they withstood Moses. Mm -hmm. That's interesting because if we go back to the text, we see that Janus and Jambres are the wizards mm -hmm. that Pharaoh called in when Moses had been given this order of God. Say, throw down your rod, you'll see the serpent. Well, when he stood before Pharaoh, Pharaoh said, oh, <laughs> good. Come here, James. Come here, James. Throw down your rod. They threw down that rod, and the very same, same thing was on. produced. Now, here's what the scripture says. If we don't come into the knowledge, revelation knowledge, there are some events that we're going to call supernatural that was produced yeah. by yeah. an acceptable mm. substitution, and There's we won't even like, know it because yeah. the truth is void and absent in the moment. And that's why we're seeing what we call supernatural but it's produced by Janus and Chambers mm -hmm. because we don't have the knowledge of the truth. And the enemy knows. He says they don't have knowledge. So let me give them some sensationalism because they love sensationalism. They love, they love. The enemy is more into the sensation than he is revelation. <laughs> okay. He want to produce something that you avoid the information in. Then he can say, look at God working your life. Mm -hmm. Well, here it is. Here it is. There's a prophet by the name of Elijah. That was in a position and he was in doubt. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord came to him and tapped him and said, what you doing in this Come position? Yeah. How can you shut the heavens? How can you open the yeah. heavens? And now you are sitting in this position. What do is now here? What are you doing? Yeah. And then he walked out of the cave. Mm -hmm. And there was an earthquake. Mm -hmm. And he says, surely, Come the, Lord, the Lord says, do not confuse me. Don't. There was a fire. Yeah. He said, oh. <laughs> there was wind. He said, surely. He said, oh. Then I thought about it. Here we are. Earthquakes, tornadoes, fires, tsunamis. Oh, God is trying to say something. He said, oh. No. Come on. Oh, you're missing me again yeah. Yeah. because you are ever learning but never coming into the knowledge of the truth. For those of you that's got to uh, 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 clock out now and go back in right now, for the rest of y'all stay in here because it's getting interesting. Because this is the time of visitation that changes our application, and now we're about to see manifestation. Yes. This is a challenge. We won't no longer will be into this word recognition stuff. I could say some cliches that I know work in this area. Let me call the people of the area and find out what they are into, and let me fix my mouth to be able to say that. The enemy is not playing, so why should we be? Come on. Right. If he's not playing, why should we be? The Lord gave me an illustration. He says, look at this. He says, it's like walking into a hostile territory of an enemy that you know wants your life. And you walk in to the hostile territory. He can't just kill you because he goes to jail. Mm -hmm. But you walk into a hostile territory with a, with a, with a cap pistol. Yeah. Yeah. BB gun. Uh, BB gun. <laughs> and when he sees the BB gun, it looks so much like the real, that yeah. he kills you. Yes. And then he pleads self-defense. Yeah. And he gets off yeah. because he thought you were real. Right. And the enemy is doing it right now because he thinks Amen. that you're real. He's saying, Jesus I know. Yeah. Paul well, I know. But, but what this stuff here, this stuff here, and so we have got to get Amen. this together. The door is open for everybody that is ready to move into their new dispensation. The door is open. We cannot sink. This was a different season that we walked in. This is twenty. I've been teaching all week about how how uh, Jacob labored seven years to get Rachel, but he was given Leah. Yeah. He worked seven more years to get Rachel. Still, he was not satisfactory to the ones that had. Uh, uh, power over him. He had to work six more years till the 20th year. We have operated and worked and labored until year 20. Mm -hmm. God says it's time for inheritance for those that can follow mm -hmm. the instruction. It's going to be difficult for some. It's going to be difficult for some, but watch how God comes in in this season. Now, let's get to the task at hand. Okay. <laughs> let's get to the task That's at good. hand. We are talking today uh I've been talking, but i got to get this into your life. Here it is. We're talking about the time is right. Yes. The time yes. is right. God has not forgot. For those of you that are ready to make a switch and abrupt change, go ahead and say, Lord, I repent. The day you hear. Come on, courage. The day yes. you hear yes. my voice. Hard harden. Not. Not your, how do you harden your heart? Because you got something there that is already mastering you. Yeah. Mm. That's the hardening of When we look at these things called hardening of the heart, we think of all this, we go to the extreme. But 
the, the, the best way to distract somebody that is onto something significant is not something outlandish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's to bring a picture that is close to the picture that they're looking mm -hmm. at and exactly. make them have to make a choice. Yes. It's this one is just as good as this one, so I gotta make a choice on it. And so he's distracted because if I choose this one is okay, if I choose this one is okay. That's what is happening in the many, in the life of many. You can't really follow the direction of God because you think you're already in ministry. My God. And it's good to you. But God is going to have a birthing order. I preached this, uh, been preaching that there's a difference between the things that rear you and the things Amen. that you were birthed to. Mm -hmm. Many are feeling the effects of what they were reared in. And then there's a day that your birthing call is going to happen. And it happens after a generation. 40 years is always a generation in scriptorial terms. And so after 40 years of Moses being in Egypt, the birthing call comes. So you have lived a generation in what you were reared in. This is the season that your birth cry and birth call. I got to let this go to get what's better. So you got to see what God is pulling you to bigger than what you're in. Mm -hmm. That's all I said. Now, the time is right. I want to talk about something. I want to talk about something really quickly. I want to talk about something real quickly. The time is right. I want, I want to preference a passage of scripture, uh, Acts, the third chapter, Acts number three. To me, to me, to me, Acts chapter 3, this is one of the most interesting uh, chapters in the Bible, I believe. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why. Because this, 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 this Acts chapter 3 is the, the, the chapter that really talks about timing in several different phases and forms. I want to unpack something there. And let's see how much time I got so that I can get busy about this. Now, Acts chapter 3. Now, this Acts chapter 3 starts, starts by... Uh, uh, starts with an incredible miracle. Mm -hmm. You know, this uh, this uh, lame man that sat at this gate. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now watch this. Incredible miracle. But when I when I looked at this thing again on last night, the Lord began to open up again this passage of scripture. He says, now look at this. This is actually the first miracle after Pentecost. Mm -hmm. The first miracle after the upper room mm -hmm. experience. This is the first one. This is this is the this is after the visitation. Yes. God gives them a manifestation. Yeah. This is after the visitation. Now they're in this room. Everything that God has said, He says, here's the here's a here's a manifestation. If you're gonna be in this room with a visitation, there must be a manifestation. You don't walk out of here just talking. Right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we you don't you don't walk out of this experience just happy that men from all over can understand your language. Uh -huh. Come on. It's not about talk. It's about the manifestation yes. of a miracle. This is the first miracle after Pentecost. Now, this is interesting. This is interesting because our visitation that we just felt moving into this 20 was supposed to produce some miracles. Mm. It was supposed to, we were at the door of a miracle, but we walked back into what we were doing, and the miracle was put on the shelf. Oh, my God. Because if God had gave us a miracle, when we are shifting back into our old, we will get acclimated yeah. Yeah. and say, you missed the visitation that mm -hmm. should produce a manifestation, just like in this Acts chapter 3. Because there was a visitation, that room was a visitation of the Holy Spirit that had been promised by Christ. He says, I'm going to go there and, and gather together and I'm going to visit you there. Yeah. And, 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 so, and so as the text goes, there was a miracle, a, a lame man. Uh, after the miracle, the lame man uh, receives his... Um, uh, strength in his legs, and then Peter and John begin to uh, have to explain to people that's supposed to have known. Yeah, right. that they they marveling like, what's going on? He says, I thought you were supposed to know. Yeah. This is actually the results of the Jesus whom you had just crucified. Yeah. Wow. The one that had just been taken, this is the results of it. This is not us doing this. We were in a visitation that is that has manifested something. This, the visitation was for manifestation. He says, this is a sign of the shift. Mm -hmm. This was a, a direct result of the old being put away and the new in. Amen. Because it was prophesied of the Messiah. Yes, sir. That there were certain miracles that would be done to prove that Come he on. was the Messiah. Come on. This is one of them. Yes. He's explaining that this was one yeah. of them from the visitation. And so he's saying, not only was the Messiah given certain miracles to do to prove his validity. Mm -hmm. He says he gave us the us. power Amen. to produce and we are here as a result of that. Now let's work the miracles that the visitation 
produced. Yeah. We have missed the moment because the visitation produced a miracle moment and we walked out on it because we were not sensitive to the visitation. We went back into our old program. mode of operation yeah. and program. Yeah. And so they are explaining. And so the Bible says something significant. And so after they get through explaining, Peter went into depth. He was like, okay, now I need you to know this. This Jesus whom your fathers crucified is the one that produced this miracle. This is not us working on our own power. This was a visitation. This was not at my title. I know I was called apostle, but this is not the title that produced it. This is the power of the Christ, Come on. the anointed one that's in me. Mm -hmm. Whether you call me anything, I'm carrying something that yes, produces sir. power. Yes. I'm yes. carrying something that is powerful. Now watch this, watch this, watch this. Here it is, here it is. And, and it says here, I'm going to read the, the 20th, what I want to go, I want to do the 20th verse and the 21st verse. So after explaining, he says, he, uh, Peter says, I'm going to call it ignorance. Mm. <laughs> Now, as Peter talks, he says, it was ignorant that y'all crucified him, your yeah. father's high priest and all of them. And then y'all turned him over into the hands of Herod. Oh my God. Pilate, 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 Pilate. You tell him, ooh, wee, Jesus Christ. Right there is a revelation. You turned him into the hands of Pilate to, to, to he says, whom, whom, whom uh, he wanted to set free. He said mm -hmm. Pilate wanted mm -hmm. to set free. Yeah. But you guys turned him in hand and, and accepted a robber, a thief, a yeah. murderer in the place of, ain't that interesting? We're going for everything except for this Christ. My God. We, we're getting every gimmick we can come in contact with. Just so I don't want that. Mm -hmm. And he says, he says, y'all, y'all convinced Pilate not to give you what you needed, and he followed your instruction. Mm -hmm. But that's interesting because this priest, this high priest Jesus, who was the lamb that was slain, he had to be slain by the high priest, right? Right. Because he is the finish or the totality of what God told Moses to do. Yes. Right. Right. Because Moses was a shadow of things to come, uh -huh. and so the order was slay. A lamb. And so Pilate, who was a governmental official, Herod, who was governmental, if they had a slain Jesus, right. it would have been a senseless murder. Uh -huh. Because the murder had to come in church. Come right, on. right. So in your church. greatest your greatest killing, if you will, it should have come from. My God. So when you get yeah. killed in church, Help us. it's normal. <laughs> It's, it's the order. So yeah. he says, He says Pilate tried to, but Pilate couldn't. The order was, right. I've got to give you to the ones that are responsible, yeah. the high priest, mm -hmm. are to slay the lamb. And so Jesus says, I understand the order. No man, high priest, or any other person that is against my order can take my Can't life. take, Come on. amen. I give lay it down, down man. I lay. Some of you are about to lay down your title. <laughs> <laughs> you can't take yeah. this from me. I'm giving it yeah, back to you because I got something yes. in me Later. that's much more powerful. I gotta move. I gotta move. So then, now, now he gets to the twenty first. I'll just show you what twenty first do. And then we're still talking about the time is right uh -huh. because I'm talking about three levels of time. Right. I'm talking about Chronos. I'm talking about Kairos, and we're gonna talk about Harios. This is time. This chapter right here is the introduction of all three. And so, and so the twenty first. Now here's some interesting language I need to show you. It's an interesting line. The 20th verse says, and uh, uh, it says, and he shall send Jesus, which before was preached unto you. Now, now this is Peter talking about, because we know in the second uh, chapter, uh, uh, that was the uh, visitation in the upper room. The first chapter, Jesus is saying, I'm about to be taken up. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, and so he, he says, now he, why did he uh, uh, be taken? Why was he taken up? Because he had finished this part. Yeah. Now, this is the Adam second that came to restore what Adam one lost. Right. And now he says, now I have restored the power back into mm -hmm. your hand. Mm -hmm. Now get to work. Yes. And so he says, I'm going to give you an opportunity to work. The first opportunity was at that gate. Mm -hmm. He says, here's the first level of opportunity. And now, look at what Peter is saying after explaining. Watch what he says. He says, and he shall send Jesus, which before was preached unto you. You missed it the first time. Now you're going to grab it this time. We need Jesus a gun. Yeah. <laughs> we need him a gun. Yeah. Again, we need Jesus again. We need him back. Amen. Come back, Jesus. Yes. Come please. back, please. Let him now watch man. this. Now, the, the 21st verse is where it, it, the language gets really, 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 really interesting. And I need to read that. It says, whom the heaven must receive. Listen to this now. Whom the heaven must receive until the times, times of restitution of all things, mm -hmm. which God had spoken by the mouth of all his prophets since the world 
begun. Yeah. Now, hear what that just said. Whom the heavens must receive. Remember, Acts chapter 1, he is taking us. Mm -hmm. He stays in heaven until what? The restoration, restoration. of all things. Yeah. Now, here's where the mix-up comes in that passage. We thought it was saying he's coming to restore. All right. mm. It says he'll be there until it's restored. Come on. Yeah. Why? Because I have restored the power to the ones that's supposed to have the power. This was spoken from the first prophet that, that even from the beginning, he put Adam in the position of dominion in the earth. Mm. Right. And he come to restore that dominion. And he says, now you're going to restore the earth. Yeah. That's my job now, is to restore. He says, whatsoever you loose on mm -hmm. earth mm -hmm. is loose mm -hmm. in heaven. Whatsoever you bound on earth. earth. Moses, why are you heaven. standing here praying to me? Mm -hmm. yeah. Lift your rod and Come open on, up that sea. Yes. Open this Amen. sea up. So he says, he will be in heaven. Listen to it. Listen to it. I got I to read it again. It says, uh, 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 until the restitution, restitution of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Now, here it is, the first introduction of a time frame. It's called chronos. Mm -hmm. That means minutes, seconds, hours. Now, what God is saying in the beginning, I talked about season. Chronos is the picture of a general season. Mm -hmm. It's the season of restoration. Now, it says times, mm -hmm. meaning that there will be several, several. times Amen. of yeah. restoration because we're going from level to level. Right. Uh, or the glory Bible says, like, glory. glory to glory. Yeah. That's an interesting passage right there. You got to be stabilized in glory before you can go to the next level. Yeah. We thought we should go from pitiful mm -hmm. to glory. The Bible says, I'm going to stabilize you in glory uh -huh. and take you. So there'll be times of restitution, in other words, restoration. Mm -hmm. Now, now this word, Greek word for restoration is an interesting word. <laughs> the, 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 this stuff, this stuff gets me, man. When I see this, this word, this Greek word for for uh, restoration is is apokastastos. It's an interesting word because it's not just talking about uh, jo Pastor Joel has been. Uh, depleted in his works, and I give him a glass of water, and mm -hmm. he's restored. Mm -hmm. No, this is actually speaking on God's original plan being restored mm -hmm. into your life. What you were created to do, yes. he's restoring his original plan. You got caught up into other things, right. mm -hmm. but now I'm coming to you with your birthing. Yeah. Now, now listen, that's interesting. It's it's really called uh, uh, the reconstitution of All right. the original desire of God for you. So he says, this is the time that your birth call is calling out. This is the season that you're going to get a visitation and remind you of what you were created for, not what you were reared in. Come Come on. On. And so he said, there'll be times. And once you accept the first level of my recreation, uh -huh. he says, now I'm going to take you level after level after faith, level faith. after level. Faith, I can't faith. get you into levels when you are not operating in order. Yeah. That's been the holdup yes. is the fact that you have not gotten in order yet. If you get back to the thing that I originally called you to, that's going to be level. Now watch this. It says, it says again, whom the heavens must receive until the times of restitution of all things. My job when I'm in order, God says I can restore. I, I am here. If my people will call by my name, what the humble, humble it, it, he keeps saying it, right? He says the whole earth, the whole creation is mourning and groaning, and waiting for the manifestation of something, you and I. of us, right? Yeah. It says this, the creature was subject to vanity, uh -huh. not willing to, not, not willingly, yes. but by him that also subjected it to hope. I'm like, Lord, what are you talking about? Yes. He says, Adam yeah. Come on. subjected the creature to yeah. vanity mm. because of his missing of my order. Yeah. He was the same one that was supposed to subject him to hope. Yeah. So now the second Adam comes to restore what the first Adam lost. Yeah. And now he says, I have ascended because the job is complete. I need you to put this thing in order. Come on now. That's called chronos. That's mm -hmm. chronos time. Times of restoration. Interesting, right? Interesting. Now let, 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 let me move forward because it says, I'm, I'm going to read the 22nd verse because that's interesting. For Moses truly said unto the Father, a prophet shall the Lord raise up. Until uh, unto you of his brethren, like unto me, him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. 23rd verse says, and it shall come to pass that every soul, listen to this, every soul which will not hear the prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Who is the prophet? Jesus. 
He's talking about, now please hear me, he's talking about Jesus. So now Jesus is about to be preached again while we'll, we'll fall again and all this other stuff. What are we going to do? We're going to preach Jesus. Mm -hmm. We're going to preach Jesus mm -hmm. again and we're going to see the works of him. Now watch this. It says, and, and, and it shall come to pass that every soul which shall not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. And it says, yeah, all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken like, have likewise foretold of these days. Now, this is interesting because it says from Samuel back. Well, well, then it says all the prophets earlier, it says all the prophets from the beginning. Now, that's interesting because here's what I got to understand. And it says everybody don't hear the voice of that prophet. Mm -hmm. Now, the ministry of Christ was reconciliation. Mm -hmm. That's why we see Second Second Corinthians uh, 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 chapter five verse number nineteen is it says God was in Christ mm -hmm. reconciling yes. the world. Mm -hmm. Yes, God was in Christ doing what? Yeah. Reconciling. In other words, this is the season of reconciliation. There again, restoration mm -hmm. to call you back to your original intent. Now, intent. Now, here's what the scripture said: Everybody that refused that prophet or that prophetic order, right. everybody that don't know that this is the season and preach Jesus, the Jesus or the Christ or the the sick one to restore, they are going to be taken away from the yeah, people. Yeah. Because this is a season of restoration. There's many people that are under the sound of my voice right now. You're going through some difficult things. But this is the season of your restoration. Mm -hmm. God is going to restore the due order. Yes. Not just an order. The due order that is according to your ordination. And the people that don't understand, everybody that talked about you, everybody that can't see this, they'll be taken from the people. That's why the scripture says that everyone that curses you, I curse them. Mm. But everyone that bless you, I will bless, bless them. Are y'all still here? Yes. Now, it says all the way from Samuel to uh, the prophets of this day. Interesting, interesting passage of scripture because Samuel didn't mention Jesus. Right. I thought he didn't. But then the Lord alerted me again. He says, 2 Samuel 7, David is trying to build me a house after he got rest from all his enemies. Mm -hmm. And I told him that out of the seed of Jesse was going to come a son. So Samuel actually spoke exactly this passage that there was one coming that was going to be the restoration piece of all things. And now he's did his job. Now he's taken into heaven until the restoration of all things. In other words, I've given you power now. Yeah. I've given you the authority now. I'm, I'm working in you a work that restores. Your mm -hmm. life can be restored because your understanding and revelation yeah. has been restored. Ain't that a powerful thing? Now, now, I want to show you this. I want to go back now. Now, the 19th verse, because we just talked about chronos, the times, the general season of restoration. And it says times, which is plural. That means that we are going from glory to glory. Mm -hmm. It's been difficult to climb the ladder because you were trying to climb in the wrong place. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was trying to climb. It, it's, that's why the Jacob story is so powerful to me. Jacob didn't have visions at his house. Yeah. He had a vision when he got to the rocky place. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it's been a difficult place, but we couldn't process God there. Yeah. And when Jacob got to the rocky place, he discovered that I see angels ascending yeah. and descending. Yeah. Now, why did the angels ascend before they descend? Hmm. I've got an interesting question. Yeah. Because there's some stuff that you got to send out. Come on. Before God put something in there. You Come got on. to you got to remove. Let me Amen. get in. Now he did say angels, uh, yeah. and duh. Meaning these things that you had are good things. They were applicable for a past life. Okay. But if you want to see what God has got in this new life, you got to get rid of the good things Ooh. from your past life that brought some 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 healing and some voices from Come the on. Seat. Come on. Move it. All right, yes. great. Now I'm moving into what God said. Are y'all still here with me now? Yeah. Now, now here it is, the nineteenth verse. It says, now, what we must do is repent ye, therefore, and be what? Converted. <laughs> be con. This is interesting language. Mm -hmm. Repent. I need to open that up. I need to open Repent. Repent. And be converted. Now, repent is a word called metanoia. That's a Greek word. Mm -hmm. Right. It means to change your mind. Because mm -hmm. you had a mindset that wouldn't allow you to see it the way God is trying to show mm -hmm. you. Right. It's called filter. We call it day in, 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 in social media language. It is a filter. filter. Yeah. Your, your filter is wrong. Yeah. Your filter is off. Come. And so repent. Yeah. to know a change the way or change your mind. Take a new filter and, 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 and take on a new filter, right? That's what it says. Now watch this. It says, it says uh, repent yeah. ye therefore and be converted. Now watch mm -hmm. this, converted. You're going to have to shift. 
conversion is ship. Mm -hmm. You're gonna you, if if you're a mechanic, you put a conversion kit mm -hmm. on your car when something won't fit. You're gonna have to convert it right. because mm -hmm. it's something trying to be that it makes better yeah. that won't fit. And so he's trying to tell us this is going to be a challenge. In other yeah. words, he says it's going to it's going to be a challenge. It says he, he says he says, he says uh, repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Blotted out. Now that's specific language. Yes, sir. If we don't know the language, sin. Watch this. Sin in Greek is called hermetia. Mm -hmm. Repent means uh, uh, to change mm -hmm. your mind. Metanoia, right? Now that's interesting that your sins be blotted. Hermetia, a Greek word, meaning missing the mark. Mm -hmm. You have not seen it properly or the way that God wants you to see it in your ordination because you've been busy living something else. And so you've always missed the mark mm -hmm. because you keep seeing it the way that they told you to see it. Yeah. And the worst thing that can happen to you is that you operate the same and expect something different. Amen. Amen. That's been the plight of our life. Now Amen. let me move on. It's called insanity. Insanity. When the times of refreshing, look at that. There go times again. The times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. What is the presence of the Lord? Visitation. Yes. The presence of the Lord means visitation. Now, 21st verse says the time of restoration. Mm -hmm. Right? Right. This says the times, times of refreshing. refreshing from the presence of the Lord. So now, first level is uh, uh, this word called uh, 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 a season, a general season, okay. chronos, mm -hmm. general season. Mm -hmm. Now we are moving into what we call carols. All right. Meaning there's a visitation that I've got to be sensitive to even in the season that God produced. Opportune. There's a special, a yeah. opportune time inside the season. This thing got levels to it. Mm -hmm. People are recognizing that we're in a chronos. Come on. But they don't recognize the carols. Mm. They they miss the visitation. That when the Spirit of the Lord moves, he says, Jump now. Yeah. Amen. Jump in, jump in, jump in, jump in now. And say, so he says, here's gonna be a time of visitation from the Spirit of the Lord. Here's what is happening. Here's what is happening. We keep the same graces or the same angels that we haven't sent out. Mm. And so we think we're good mm. when God says, I'm giving you a fresh visitation yeah. that's going to make you better. better. Amen. If you can recognize this visitation, now listen yeah. to me, you can recognize this visitation. He says, many are missing my time because they are already good. Mm -hmm. Because it's so familiar to them. They're saying the same things and it's producing the same thing. And they're praying urgently to me about me manifesting something that I can't because they live from their mouth. Wow. I can't do what I'm, I want to do because I need you to recognize me now. Right. If you don't understand me, you're going to miss the visitation. In, 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 in Luke chapter 24, there was a road called uh, uh, Emmaus. Two were on it. And there was some two of them that should have recognized yes. him, but they right. couldn't yes. recognize right. him. Yes. And they were having conversation. And he says, what are these conversations? <laughs> Come on. It says Jesus himself. Mm -hmm. Now, it was interesting because it says himself because he had been crucified. He was his visage was marred above, as Isaiah said. So he was beaten, and they couldn't recognize him because they were so caught up into what was, they can't see Jesus himself. How many times have we been caught up into something that we can't recognize his presence? Mm -hmm. And he says, Oh fools, mm -hmm. it's slow and hard to believe. Mm -hmm. Ought not Christ to have suffered first and then entered? And then the Bible says, then he went on to have communion. With them, and then their eyes were open. So we are in a Kairos moment, meaning the presence of the Lord is here, and we might not recognize His Ooh, house mm, and miss an entire visitation mm. because we are back into our old modes of operation. Now, 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 clearly, God is saying something here, and He's urgently saying, "I need you to hear me in this season. You're gonna have good church, and you're gonna miss my presence. Come on, man. you're gonna have good assemblies, you're gonna miss my presence. How does this happen?" Paul makes reference to this Acts chapter seventeen. He says, "I see your devotions, mm -hmm. but there's an inscription on your devotion. You haven't one devotion, mean you haven't one for church. <laughs> you got people that are ever learning because the text says they were every day trying to learn new things. You're ever learning, but you don't have truth. So I see your devotions, but here's the problem: there's an inscription on." the devotion that says to the unknown God. Mm. How can you be worshiping Come something on. that you know nothing about? Mm. We do it all the time yeah. because we miss the time of visitation. We miss the carol. Now, there's one more. Let's talk about this word, Herios. I need to show you. Can, I, gotta, I, I want y'all to see this because there's a third mode of operation. 
we're gonna do we're gonna do old school. Pastor Joel is gonna show you because this is interesting. I want you to see this this word harios. It's an interesting word. It's it's called in 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 in, in the Greek. It's called beautiful. Mm -hmm. Can you see that? Can you guys see that? I don't know yes, they can. They can. Look at there it is right there. Harios pronounced harios. Look at that. Belonging to the right hour of season, timely. Now look at the bottom part of that. It says beautiful, figuratively. Mm. You see that? Mm -hmm. Now, now, why is that important? You take it down, brother, uh, Pastor Joel, because I need you to see this. But we talked about Kronos. We talked about Kairos. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about Harry. Mm -hmm. Now it brings us to the beginning of the chapter. All right. Now, watch this. This visitation should produce a manifestation. Watch this. It's important. I need you to hear me now. Now, watch this. The text starts out by saying, Now, after, now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour mm -hmm. of prayer. That's a time uh, 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 frame. That's a specific hour. Don't miss this visitation Amen. at the hour of prayer. Now watch this. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, womb was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called what? Beautiful. Beautiful. Now we just looked in the text that this word time frame, uh -huh. the right hour, is called what? Beautiful. beautiful. Now God is speaking something. It was not about a beautiful gate. It was about a right time, time. situation. Amen. Amen. Now watch this. This is after the visitation of the upper room. And he says, after the visitation, I'm going to give you a manifestation. If you can discern the right time, time. time. it's going to be beautiful yeah. if you can discern the right time. And so watch this. And they carried him into... Uh, to the gate called beautiful to ask alms of them that entered into the temple into the temple third verse says and 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 seeing peter and john about to go into the temple ask alms for first and peter fastened his eyes upon him uh, with john and said unto him look on us and he gave heed unto them expecting to receive something of them sixth verse says and peter said silver and gold have i none but such as i have Give I thee in the name in of the Jesus name. Christ of Nazareth. Uh, rise up and walk. Seventh verse says, and he took him by the right hand. Listen to it. He took him by the right hand. Check this out. He took him by the right hand and lifted him up. And immediately his feet and his ankles received strength. And he leaped up, stood, walked, and entered into, into <laughs> with them into the temple, walking, leaping, and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. That's an interesting thing because once I recognize the visitation, uh -huh. he says, I'm going to give you a manifestation. It's called Harios. It's the right time. So this is a moment after the upper room, which they, they had a visitation. He says, now is the time for manifestation. Ain't that interesting? Because right now, God is entering us to a place where we're going into the temple. Yeah. And he says, this is the right hour. Yes, yeah. I am putting, listen, 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 listen. I am putting something in place right now, if you can recognize my timing. Amen. This is going to change the whole trajectory of your ministry if you got an eye for the spiritual. Now, watch this. This man had been set at this gate 40 years. Mm -hmm. This is a 40-year thing for him to set at this gate. Here's the question. If he's been there 40 years, why didn't Jesus heal him when he went Come into on. the gate? Why didn't he heal him? Because he says, there are some things that I'm going to do, but there's some things I'm going to leave for you to do because I'm ready yes, to promote I. you because yeah. you are sensitive to my visitation. Mm. Yeah. I could have done it, but I want to show you that you can do what I do. You see me do it. Now it's time for you to do it, but you got to recognize this time of visitation. Now, here's what is interesting in this passage. I got to give it to you. When Peter said, he says, fasten your eyes on us. Mm -hmm. And then he says, the man expects expected that they were going to give him some silver and gold uh -huh. or something tangible. Peter says, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. This is the season for the such as I uh -huh. have. Yeah. Because we've thrown money at situations mm. and people's problem. Come on, money ain't the thing that produces a miracle. A visitation produces a miracle. When you don't have visitation, you throw money at it. So I got to be very careful that I don't think the totality of my ministry is just to feed people. Come mm. on, man. 
We have power. There's a miracle that God is trying to produce that changes. People need to be fed, of course. People yeah. need money, of course. Yeah. But what God is saying, that this person, if you give them what they've been getting, you're going to find them there yes. tomorrow. Amen. But Number if you four. give them the such as I have yeah. that I received from the visitation on, I just on. had, yes. then it changes their life. Now, you got to see this picture like this picture really is. Mm -hmm. This man has been uh, lame from his mother's womb. Mm -hmm. Now, several of us know from experiencing from other people and some that are under sound of my voice have experienced. When you have been hurt severely in your legs, you've got to go to therapy to learn how to walk again. Yes. Yes. This is after you have walked maybe 30 years and you have, you got to go to therapy to learn how to walk again. But what happens when you have a man Mm. That never walk, and in moments, Me. immediately he steps up to the plate and say, "My, can you imagine that everybody in the building is like, how in the world uh, is this happening? Yeah. Now the eyes again are on the temple. Mm. Yeah. Now the eyes again. This man is walking. He's leaping. He's not playing around. He's not gradually getting no. uh -huh. this miracle." Absolutely and went into his anatomy and changed everything, and he's walking upright, Ugh. shouting and leaping. Are you, are you listen now. to me? Now, this is what this visitation season is trying to produce, where things we don't have to work. People have been crippled their whole life in certain situations. You've been under the gun by the enemy. But what God says this visitation is going to produce, it's not going to be a gradual oh, no. healing. Instantly, he want to heal everything. Amen. Instantly, he want to he want to make the change. But Amen. this comes from the proper time. Mm -hmm, right Visitation. Yes. The gate called beautiful was a time gate. Mm. I've set in place a miracle that changes everything for you if you can recognize my time of visitation. Now look at this. Look at this. I got to show you this. I got to show you this. Now the Bible says that he gave him the right hand. Of he gave fellowship. him his right hand. That's interesting. <laughs> there is a right hand of fellowship. Mm -hmm. That money, see, see, we've been throwing money at it, but we haven't given the, given the right hand right. of fellowship. Yeah. Because the right hand of fellowship is when people are now whole again. Yeah. Now, now watch this. Uh, that's a time stamp right there. Now, the Bible says that Jesus goes in on the Sabbath day into the temple. And the Pharisees, the religious people, are watching him mm -hmm. because there's a man there with a withered hand. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they're watching him. And he come says, he I can't do? come in here <laughs> with the withered setting here and call it beautiful. Okay. <laughs> so, so now watch this. The text says, the text says, Jesus grabbed a man's hand. Here it is. He got it. He's looking at the withered hand. He's got it. He says, stretch forth your hand. Now, many versions of it says, he says, stretch forth thy hand. Yeah. The, 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 the man put forth his hand. Now, he looks at the Pharisees. He says, how many of you yeah. that's got a, 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 a sheep a, 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 that's in a pit on the Sabbath uh -huh. won't take him out on the Sabbath? And he's looking for an answer. Make now sure he's not. He's he, he, he's he, he's he's saying. Now y'all watch this. Come now on. I'm not. Every question Jesus asks is rhetorical. Uh -huh. Right. I'm not right. asking for an answer. I'm trying to prove something here. Yeah. He says, "Now look at this hand. How many y'all? Now they looking at saying, oh my God, I would.' He says, "I'm not asking you if it's all right to do this.' Right. He's saying, how many laws am I have to break to do it? My God. <laughs> That's what he's saying to you right now. He says, I'm not asking you if I can. Uh -huh. How many things you got in your mind that says I can't do it? How many laws will I have to break to make this miracle happen? I'm ready to, I'm ready. This is the right time for miracle. Now, listen, in, the, in those versions of this, of this passage, uh, Mark chapter 3, uh, uh, Matthew 12, it says, he says, stretch forth the hand. Now, now Luke's rendition, Luke 6 says, right hand. Yeah. I think that was interesting that, that the other passages say hand. Right. Because here's what we are suffering from in church when mm -hmm. you're dressed up. When he says, stretch forth your hand, most of the time we're going to keep the, the, the withered hand behind. We're going to put forth that yeah. good hand yeah. so yeah. people yeah. can think we all right. Yeah. Yeah. But in, the, yeah. in, in Luke, he says, no, no, don't put forth your Come good on. stuff. Right. Show me the stuff that's been messing up. Yes. I need that right hand because yeah. right hand is always... The hand of fellowship. fellowship. This is a season of fellowship that comes from visitation. And now he says, since you are the restoring agent, you got to have a visitation that make you recognize where I am and what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to give you a moment. Here's what is interesting, and that time is almost up, and I got to get this into your life before mm -hmm. I end this thing. Now watch this. It says, it says, it says here in. Uh, uh, the eleventh verse. I'm gonna read the eleventh verse now. Watch this, people of God, uh, 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 scholars. Watch this, scholars. Watch this. This is three. Uh, 
uh, verse 11. Verse 11, it says, And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch. That is called Solomon's Great Lit Wandering. Solomon. Now, here they are on the porch of Solomon, wondering. Now, what does that say, Pastor? How can you be on the porch of all wisdom? Because mm. Solomon is a signal, For a wisdom. picture of wisdom yeah. and wondering. Because right. God has just worked a miracle that the wise of this world trying to figure out how in the world did he do that? How did this happen? And we're going to see something happen that the wise is going to be, the scholars are going to say. Yeah. This does not come from your learning. Yeah. This comes from your visitation. Yes. That's yes. something that you're going to carry that comes only out of your time spent in the presence of the Lord. Yes. Your education is not going to produce this. It's the visitation that's going to produce this. So here's the people on the porch called Solomon. Mm -hmm. The smart folks saying, how did this happen? Look at, look at the 21st. 21st. Look at the 21st. The verse is, 21st says, and when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, ye men of Israel. You church, church guys. Yes. You Come church boys. That's a picture of church. That's a picture of chosen. Yeah. You men of the chosen of, of church, why marvel ye at this? Mm -hmm. Don't you go to church? No, no. Is this not supposed to be the house of faith? House of faith? This, is this supposed to be the thing or the place that this happened? Yeah. Amen. Now watch this. Watch this. <laughs> <laughs> why marvel at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us as though by our own power? Of holiness, we made this Amen. man walk. Wow. This was the product. Amen. This is the product of a risen Christ. That if we seek him, it's going to happen Amen. again. If we would allow him to invade the kingdom, show me your glory. This is going to be a normal place. Now, 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 watch this. I'm going to end on this. I'm going to end on this. So the Bible says that they came up in the, what was that? It says the ninth hour. Mm -hmm. Does that say ninth? The hour. Of the, the, yeah, the good John into the temple at the hour of prayer. Come on now. The beginning you. being the ninth hour. So Come now on. we got a third hour, which is nine. Yeah. Uh -huh. We got a sixth hour, which is noon, Come and the ninth it. hour. <laughs> Here's what my problem is. Now this says the ninth hour of the week. Uh -huh. It says of the day. <laughs> it didn't say the. It didn't say now. This is three. There's a there's a there's a third hour yeah. nine. It didn't say Monday. There's, there's uh -huh. a, right. This is uh -huh. Monday. There's a third yeah. hour nine, a sixth hour noon, and a, a ninth a ninth hour three uh -huh. of the day. Uh -huh. It didn't say of the week. Okay. Right. So that means that they were going up to the temple three times up. Day. A day, mm -hmm. not three times a week. My God. Yeah. Perhaps we are missing come miracles church. because we only want to come two times. Come on, church. <laughs> One time. <laughs> One time. Come on. A week. Maybe. I'm just I'm just saying. I'm just, I'm, no, I'm you're just, in there. I'm just saying you're maybe we are not seeing this level yeah. because we don't want to come. We don't want to do that. That's why the scripture says very clearly. I'm closing my Bible. It's over with. I'm closing my Bible. That... How, how good and how pleasant it is. What is that? Psalms 133. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For brothering to dwell together, together in unity. unity. It is like yes. it. the healing, yes. the ointment that flows from the head down to the beard. beard. It says, hold on, even Aaron's beard. Now, Aaron is a picture of the priesthood. If originally, it says it's just going to flow down from the head to the beard, meaning in your natural life. Right. But then it says, if you come together, I'm going to heal your spiritual life. Yes. And then it's going to go down to the lower part. So nobody will be left out no. if we can gather together Thank in you. his name. Let's pray Amen. together. Let's pray for the people. Father, thank you for this uplift. I thank you for the word. I thank you so much for the blessings yes. that are in line. Once we get in order, you're going to make things happen. Yes. The, the heavens, we have a sag in our ceiling. Mm. It's because there's so many blessings that's trying to shower on us. That the only thing we need to do is penetrate with a pinhole. Mm. And it's going to overshadow us. Lord, thank you for the due order you. that you have given us. Thank you so much for this time that you allowed us to speak into the life of people. Lord, we not, do not take it for granted. Yes. Thank you so much for what is happening in, your, in the kingdom. Bless. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Right. Anywhere without. Man. Boy, I'm telling you something, man. If y'all read this, if y'all read this, uh, this Acts, the third chapter, I'm telling you, that's something, that's some stuff in there, man, that I've never seen. And it's, 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 
But when Jesus says this, notice, notice when he says, he says, when they said, when shall the kingdom be restored to Israel? Mm -hmm. Specifically, right? Mm -hmm. Notice what that, uh, 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 so, so the fourth verse of Acts chapter 1, it says, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they shall not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which say, have you, have you, uh, all right. Well, so watch this, watch this. Mm -hmm. Now watch this, it's interesting. We're still in Bible study, Facebook. It says, it says, and wait for the promise of the Father, which said, he, he had heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days from here, uh -huh. mm -hmm. from hence. Watch what it said. And when they were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to what? Israel. Israel. Now, they said they're still specifically to Israel. Because all his messages has been to the Jew first. Right. But now notice what he says. He does not even address the question right. the way that they want. Now notice right. what he said. He says, he says uh, uh, and he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times of the season which the Father had put in his own power. Eighth verse says, but ye shall what? Receive power. power after that which the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be what? Witness. To me, both in Jerusalem, Israel, Jerusalem. and into Judea, mm -hmm. and Samaria, and the other most part of the earth. It says, you trying to specifically make me the God of Israel. That's, that was dead. I have changed to do order. Now, Israel is a part, and the whole entire world come on. is a part of this new order. Mm. There's no uh, a Jew, nor Gentile, male, or female. Everybody yeah. Has has been a uh, uh, purpose under this. Now this is going to be revol. This is going to revolutionize some things. Yeah. Because we thought it was still a separation in the sets. That's one order, and then there's another order. Mm -hmm. That's not what the scriptures. Jesus didn't even reply to them because they say, "When are you gonna come in?" That was the question of that every day. Yes, when right. are you gonna take Caesar out? He says, "I'm not interested come in Caesar. On. Right. I'm not interested in government." Right. Mm -hmm. He says, "If I can get you to see the kingdom of heaven, mm -hmm. then what I'm Trump is mind. doing don't matter. Don't matter. Right. What you're seeing on TV right. now don't matter. If I can get your mind right, get whose whose image is on this? Come on. Come he on. says, "They said Caesar." So they say, "Render so unto Caesar, Caesar what, is Caesar. what is Caesar." I'm not trying to break that down. He tells Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. They say, oh, well, I'm good with you then. Right. That's why he says go. Yeah. Because he said, if my, if this was kingdom, then I would have angels right now knocking you in the head. Yeah. But this is not my place. Yes. Right. And so render unto Caesar, because the image of Caesar is on the corner. So render unto Caesar. What is he? As a matter of fact, Jesus said, I pay taxes here. Right. Because the children of the, the this world don't pay taxes. Yeah. He says, Peter who? He says, stranger. Right. He says, so you always have to pay because you're not of this world. Right. And I, if, But if you will, will understand that you're not of this world, mm -hmm. then you're going to have to pay a penalty. If you will allow me, I'll pay all your penalties. Now go down to the, the wallet and get Come the on. money to pay the penalty, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And so and so now what we are experiencing now is that there's a there's a there's a, a difference that we have missed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because he says, render unto Caesar because there's an image. Yeah. Whose image is on you? Mm. So if the render comes because of the image, <laughs> if you were created in this image, you better right. be rendering and stop worrying. Yeah. You need to start rendering and stop worrying. worrying. Amen, Facebook. Amen. <laughs> Amen, social media. Amen. We're going to stop worrying because we are to render. Yeah. Amen. Blessings. Blessings, everybody. Blessings. Blessings. Blessings, blessings. blessings See you are Monday. no blessings. See you Monday. 12 noon. See you Sunday morning, 9 a.m. Yes. 11, 11 yes. West 7th Street is going up just like this. For just sure. like this. Just like this. Blessings.